folks, here we are with the Triumph Acclaim which I've just brought. And let's have a little look around it and find out what needs to do into it. For us to bring it up to a lovely usable working classic. There's not too much that needs to be done because, as I say, it, is, it has got a, an MOT, but it's been standing for seven years. So it's a little bit untidy on the outside. So we're going to address them. We're going to give the car uh, a full body respray on a budget. So let's get going. Right, well, as you can probably see around the wheel arches, there's not too much at all. Obviously, they have been repaired at some time, the rear wheel arches. But everything like the doors, all the wings, the rest of the body panels are all okay. And I just started to take the trim off now. As you can see, these uh, rubber channels here just pull out. And these little end bits here, uh, they've got a, an old rusty Phillips screw in there. So I'm going to take that out. So that'll be the, the, the actual trim to be removed. What we have come to realise is parts for these Triumph claims are very, very rare. Now, I've looked on the register, which tells you how many of these uh, cars are actually registered, taxed or, or sawn in the UK. And there's only about 102 of them recorded uh, that are of this model, which is the HL model, are actually recorded in the UK and something like 45 of them are actually on the road at the moment and the, the remaining uh, 50 odd are sawn, declared sawn, in other words they're off the road so very rare car, parts are very hard to come by and the sort of things that you have the biggest problem with uh, which you just cannot seem to get anywhere are the windscreen rubber seals for the front and back windscreen and also the chrome insert trim that goes with them so I mean, I've got a little problem on the back uh, with uh, possible cracking of one of them, so I'm gonna have to possibly look for another car. And the similar car that, uh, well, basically what this is, is a Honda Civic, but I think the Mark II Honda Civic of the same generation. It's virtually the same car, but in the same breath, you're looking at parts which are basically not made anymore. No one makes pattern parts, so you've just got to sort of overcome and adapt and hunt around for, for used examples or or ones that are being broken but they're very very rare these cars very rare so let's have a look proper look around now this one and let's just see what our basis for our little restoration is going to be i mean one of the typical things we've got here is to say this uh, insert here i'm going to be taking the screens out to give it the respray obviously so i've got to actually just unclip that there pull this trim out and hopefully we'll be able to pop the windscreen out but as you can probably see there there is a little bit of crackage from the old rubber there. The rest of it is pretty much okay, but um, I may have to find a way of, I don't know whether I can resurface this or perhaps find another one. I did find another set in a breaker's yard, but it was too far away, but um, I will have to look into that anyway. The front screen is exactly the same. Again, typical for one of these, I think you'll find, is that the uh, trim pops out there, which this one's actually done there. So this front screen's gonna be coming out anyway and this actual trim i don't know whether this is a universal trim which someone's actually fitted but it's obviously too short anyway it's shrunk over the years or or um, it's uh it, it comes in two halves there as you can see top and bottom so there's a seam on the top and the bottom there that's obviously got to be addressed the flaking paint i'm not really too bothered about because it's uh, only very very minor on the bodywork the front wings are actually in very, very good condition there, as you can see there, look, absolutely uh, lovely condition there. As is all the grills, the only thing I've got there is a broken light lens, which I'm going to obviously replace as well. Again, very hard to find again, silly little things like that. And let's open the door, and let's just take you inside, just to let you see the uh, how retro this car is. There we go. So let's just go inside. And it's a little bit dark in here, but oh, it does smell in the 80s. Now, I don't know whether you can actually see, but the seats here are, are totally, look like, they're, they're, look like they've been unused. Now, as I say, I know, I know the 
previous owner very well. And he's had the car, as I say, for about 18 years. And I actually remember him when he put this in storage uh, in 2007. And it's been in a, a closed, locked up garage uh, attached to someone's house. And as I said, it was um, it was put on blocks, I think, he, he told me. And the underside of it is heavily, in the 18 years that he's had it, it's not done very, very many miles because he lived locally in the village. So it wasn't really a problem. And all the, all the underneath is heavily undersealed. Uh, even before he put it in storage, he actually gave it another coat of underseal as well. So there shouldn't be any rot underneath whatsoever, as I say. And definitely uh, since he's owned it in the 18 year period. And it's a sign of the bodywork, as I say, that the, uh, the, the actual bodywork and the interior, as you can probably see, is in actually fantastic condition. All, all original, as I say, at some stage he must have obviously had a radio put in it. It is a five speed model not the automatic and everything is here all the door panels all in excellent condition slight little mark which will probably clean off there on the roof line there's only two there and around the sun visor no problems there the dashboard as I said to you is uh, in uh, totally original condition none of it's cracked at all and the carpets which normally do suffer uh, in absolutely fantastic condition and they're all totally original things like the door trim there I'll probably just clean up but um, absolutely lovely everything's in absolutely wonderful condition so let's just open the bonnet and have a little look around the bonnet so let's get the bonnet out and have a little look there we go right well i've just found the um the uh Ro the austin rover body plate on it and it says the paint code there is gmd d for desmond and the trim is AMV. That will obviously mean something to uh, you try for claim owners. So the GMD is the paint code which I'm going to need because I'm going to get the actual uh, colour uh, reproduced. So there you go. But all in all, I mean all these uh, hoses and pipes and stuff like that, all totally original. I'm going to be taking things off like the um, the radiator. The, the rocker cover is obviously going to have to come off because I'm going to do the... Um, the tap it's got a couple of no uh, one, one, one or two I think it's only one noisy tap it so not a problem at all so I'm going to need a rocker cover gasket now I also I'm going to change the timing belt on this for the sake of a 10 to 12 pound item it's something which I'm going to do for the next owner who ever buys this vehicle so I'll, I'll be doing that anyway and I'll be just taking off uh, all the ancillary stuff here for example because there's a good chance that I'm probably going to paint most of the engine bay in the original colour and the reason for that is is that obviously you've got this patch weld in here and what I possibly may do there is I may grind that flat I'm not too sure yet I might, I might even leave it I don't know yet I'll take off the alternator maybe even take off the distributor there and probably give them a, a, a wire brush in and maybe a coat of silver paint I'm not too sure yet exactly the same with the radiator so yeah it's just going to be basically a good tidy up under here and a good clean up old grease obviously which has been sort of stuck on here for years and years as you can see underneath it's probably looking all right so it may look all right with just a cleanup i'm not too sure yet but uh, that's the engine so yeah all pretty tidy all pretty tidy so yeah as i say i'm going to start stripping stuff down now as i say because i want to get all the um all the trim off because i'm going to give it a full body respray so that's what i'm going to start to do now get the lights out and stuff like that oh one other thing as well let's take you into the boot there's the RS Turbo by the way, just a little quick look at that Gary's uh, getting the bumpers back on as you can probably remember just got the external trim around the doors now and underneath and uh, as you can see it's looking pretty nice now although it's all got to be just finally cut back and uh, polished we haven't done that yet so but looking very nice, that's the RS Turbo there looking good so coming over to the boot I'll just open that, there we go Again, it did have one little piece of welding in the back as well, which was just a little plate. I don't know if you can see that. A couple of small plates, one there and one there. Very minor. Everything else is in very, very good condition there, as you can probably see. And it's all totally original. So, as I say, I'm going to start removing the trim now. I'm going to get the bumpers off as well and remove all the lights. So make a start on this and then we can get the bodywork prepared <coughs> Thank you. 
we go. That's one off. I'm going to do the rest. Right, well, that's the two back lights out. Well, as you can probably see there, this is the point of actually taking all the ancillary lights out. I mean, you could have probably just masked these off and given them a, a, a respray, but you, you would have still had all this sort of stuff underneath. And if you're doing a, a, a respray to uh, bring back this car to its former glory, uh, rather than just touch it up, these you want to be taking all the lights and fitments out, as I say, because you want to be getting... Uh, a, a complete proper spray job it is a classic car at the end of the day so there we go look just pulling that little bit of trim off there sort of thing again that will go back on there and we'll be able to treat this and deal with that and it will be as good at least you know when you bolt everything back on it's going to be as good as new for the uh, the new owner just like under the boot lid there as you can probably see there's a little bit of fester in there obviously a lot of these trims used to sort of trap water and always look on the back side you can probably see that that's exactly what's happened there so the rest of it's all okay but it's just little things like that and if you didn't go to the bother of taking all these trims off you would end up with as I say festering pieces like that and you aren't really doing a proper job if you go to the extent of doing all this you might as well do it properly again things like badges can be uh, difficult to come by so you've got to try and preserve them and just leave them in these little plastic badges off bearing in mind how old they are you could easily snap these so you quick way of doing it is probably just to get a bit of fishing wire and as you say they're normally stuck on with adhesive these and they've normally got little pins so I'm just getting some fishing wire pulling it all around underneath oh there we go that's just shot straight off <laughs> as you can see there I've just removed that I could have tried levering that and that could have possibly damaged this and snapped it these are very hard to come by so that's just a little trick there for you. I'm going to do the other side. Again, exactly the same. Run the fishing wire a bit behind it. This time I'll try not to let it shoot off. Just... You might have to put some gloves on when you do this because that can cut into your hands. So just go backwards and forwards and saw through the old uh, adhesive. I'm not saying it'll work all the times, but in this situation, it's coming off a treat. There we go. There's another one off the HL. Put that in there. <clears throat> and also, probably a good thing to actually just take a picture of all around the car before you start doing this sort of stuff because you want the labels obviously to go back in the same place. And if you haven't got another one to go by, you haven't got no reference point. So I'm all right, I've got the video. But in general, it's very good to go around and take pictures of stuff. So again, let's get that under there. And again, just gently move it backwards and forward. And there we go, there we go, off. So, very hard to get up when you're levering it with a screwdriver and you run the risk of damaging the edge, edges. Using a bit of fishing wire, that's got us over that problem. I mean, I'm taking all these ancillary items off, but um, I don't want to actually take off any strips that are going to allow water to get into the car so things like the boot rubbers for example I'm going to leave in situ at the moment I'm just going around taking off all the decorative trim uh, just to make my life a little bit easier when it comes to preparation now again I've got this strip on the boot here which is all corroded underneath and I'm not too sure how the this fastens at the moment but obviously underneath this strip there is corrosion so I've got to wait till I get the manual because I don't actually know, I can't really tell by looking at the back of this how these are actually attached to the car. So I'm going to wait for further information on that one. So if in doubt, leave alone until you can find out the information. I don't want to force anything and break anything if necessary, as I said to you, because parts on this car are very, very rare. So you're, you're having to be very careful. So I'm just taking out the reversing lights now. Not the reversing lights, the number plate lights, there's two of these. Again, just simply by undoing the screws. There is some sort of rubber gasket on there. And as to be expected, behind these units there is a bit of rust there, so where's the wires? Connect from the back there. I see, right okay. And they're colour coded, which is handy. So I'll just unplug them. There's one. There's two, now hopefully, if all goes well, 
and there we go there's one of them out again nice and simple I'll keep these screws in the box I keep all keep the old fixings I know they're only just normal self tappers but I will keep them anyway so there's another one out and it's like anything this is all totally new to me I never worked on one of these cars before but um, I now know as you work along as you go along you, you sort of become not an expert but you become familiar with a car so and that's why you see people specializing in one type of car and they get to know them inside out it's a good thing to do working on one type of car and as I say if this is your passion you'll become an expert and your expert knowledge then becomes valuable to you and also others and I would recognize now with a little bit of research I've done on this car myself how valuable or possibly in the future how valuable these cars are going to be because of their rarity so doing a job properly as a hobby can get you some valuable information on something which you don't know anything about right okay there's the other one out so there's the two reversing lights out so up until now all I've got to take out now basically is the door lock mechanism which I'm not going to bother with at the moment I can just pop that off as a little uh, clip on the back of that you just pull off and that will drop through so that's not a problem I'm not going to tackle this trim yet until I get a manual just to make sure how the fixings are bolted to this wing and then basically what I can do is to take that boot lid off just by undoing the four bolts and actually treat the rust in the comfort of the uh, log cabin or elsewhere so I'm happy with that at the moment so that's the back end apart from the bumper de-trim so to speak so I'm going to just work my way around the car now and get to the next stage right okay I've taken the footwell out uh, the boot lining out here and as you can see everything's totally original nice for any new owner to probably see this in the future that the floor is actually in very very good condition with no no rot at all there so anyone who's going to be buying this car is really buying a sound motor at the end of the day so nothing really needed to be done there all right okay that's the thing you're going to come up against you really want a good set of screwdrivers as well because a lot of these old screws are well rusted in and if you start rounding heads off you're going to come up against all sorts of trouble trying to get bleeding things like this out clips like uh, screws out of clips like this because they nine times out of ten they'll be rusty right okay now again don't know how this comes off there's three screws off release there oh there we go it's nice and handy isn't it just be gentle with them hey look that's off now doesn't that won't that be a lot better to spray once it's all rubbed down than trying to mask all that up and do it that way so because it's got some sort of weather strip on there look so there we go that's another bit saved right well I'm going to keep them screws anyway so try and get all the original screws back and you'll be all right and that'll clean up lovely that will there you go another bit of trim off right again if I'm coming up against the piece of trim which I'm unsure of I'm leaving it until I know so this looks nice and simple wing mirrors Uh, what have we got there? It's a drain cable, I think, is it? What's this? Oh no, that's the automatic adjuster, so I've got to investigate that one a little bit further. There's obviously some sort of control inside the door, so I'll just plonk that there for the minute until I uh, investigate that. I've taken this trim out of this um, windscreen here, that just literally pulled out. This is quite perish this so I'm, I'm going to possibly have to do something with this or perhaps source some other sort of a replacement if I can if not I will obviously try and use it so again just working my way around the car taking off what I can but in general as I say this car has actually been kept inside most of its life or definitely well 100% over the last seven years and before that it was very very rarely used so that's probably why it's in such good original condition I mean if there was lots of structural rust on this it probably wouldn't be worth me doing this sort of a surf I call it a surface restoration but as the car is such a good foundation it's definitely worth uh, restoring surface 
good. Well, get in there. Now this sort of stuff I can just, um, I could either get a plastic cover to go over the top of the car, I might just take that joint up there, I'm not too sure yet, but that's that bit off, they just pull up, and this should be the same. Let's get under a little corner first, and hopefully get a start. I don't want to do is kink these, so be careful. Let's try the other end. There we go. Sometimes you've got to come at it from a different angle. There we go, that's that one off. Alright, okay. Well, I may or may not be able to save this weather strip, as I say, but uh, it has shrunk anyway, so. I don't know whether there's a universal one I can use, but um, that's just another little thing I'm going to have to try and source. Let's just get this last windscreen wiper off. It's held on by a 12mm nut. And it's all these little finishing sort of detail things, like the window strips that make all the difference. And all the trim going back on a freshly painted car. So all these will have a repaint or maybe even renew the windscreen wipers, I'm not too sure yet. But um, it's going to look a lot worse before it starts to look a lot better. But well, anyway, I'm just going to carry on going around now and taking off what I can until the manual comes. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget, if you enjoy this sort of thing, give it a go. You might enjoy it. Speak to you soon. Bye bye.